There are three main methods you can use to improve the accuracy and reliability of the responses of any generative model such as large language models. The most widely used method is fine-tuning a pre-trained model as a way of post-training or additional training, but with specific data for specific use cases. This is a way of reusing the same model and redirecting it to respond to specific queries instead of building a new model from scratch. The downside of this approach is that it goes through a similar process as the initial model training. It requires high computation power and it changes the model parameters. A less demanding method is in-context learning or ICL. This is basically providing the model with additional examples of the desired response at the prompt. ICL does not require any model training or parameter tuning and anyone can do this on the flight inside the prompt. But what if you're doing research in a specialized field, let's say medicine, and have to sort, classify, and visually recognize issues in the type of data that are not very prevalent? Well, this paper on many shot in context learning in multimodal foundation models has explored this exact issue and came up with pretty interesting findings. Its opening sentences read, Large language models are well known to be effective at few-shot in-context learning or ICL. Recent advancements in multimodal foundation models have enabled unprecedentedly long context windows, presenting an opportunity to explore their capability to perform ICL with many more demonstrating examples. If you are new to this concept, in-context learning is providing the LLM with some contextual examples, also called shots, before testing the model on the actual question or query. Here's a demonstration of the concept by way of providing in-context images, whereby the model has to decide whether this image on the right is a forest, golf course, or freeway. As you see, in zero shot, no example of these are provided. In few shot ICL, only one or a few examples are given. In many shot ICL, a large number of examples are provided, whereas the most advanced setting or batched many shot ICL can perform multiple queries using multiple references or examples. Up until now, in-context learning enabled LLMs to learn from few shots without any updates to model parameters, and therefore improved specialization to new tasks without any further model training. Recently, experiments have been conducted on large multimodal models, or LMMs, for the effects of in-context learning, especially out-of-domain or out-of-distribution tasks. The issue so far has been the limited context window of most LLMs and LMMs, which constrained them to only few-shot learning. But more recent multimodal models are capable of accepting longer context windows. For example, GPT-40 enables 128,000 tokens, and Gemini 1.5 Pro can take an astonishing 1 million tokens, which prompted these guys to see the effect of ICL on model performance without any additional model training or parameter updating. So they benchmark these two LMMs performances on 10 image datasets such as medical imagery, natural imagery, remote sensing, and satellite imagery, and found that both models' response accuracies tremendously improved with many-shot ICL. Here you can see how GPT-4.0 improves its accuracy from zero shot to many shot on the satellite imagery dataset of Eurosat for land use classification, and how Gemini Pro app performs in animal species recognition on camera images. On the UC Merced satellite images, both models reached an astonishing 98.57%, and on medical imagery, they are even better than human level accuracy. That's quite something. Moving forward, this begs the question of do we need to constantly fine-tune old models now that we have these long context sizes and such proven high performances even with multimodality? Couldn't in-context learning be just the next big thing as everyone can carry out these on the fly, incorporating them in carefully designed prompt formats? Feel free to pause the video to read these sample of prompts from the paper on image classification for many-shot and batching ICL. 
as you can see, there are some advantages of incorporating ICL into AI-based projects. Perhaps the main advantage is providing a training-free method whereby you do not need to fine-tune the models with your specific data and change the model parameters. The ICL is usually done with natural language prompts, and the whole idea is very similar to how humans learn by analogy. This taxonomy of ICL depicted by Vincent too also shows more sophisticated versions of in-context learning. For example, supervised and self-supervised warm-up stages, as well as prompt formatting and selecting the scoring function, along with the studies that have experimented with this. To have better results with ICO, we ideally want to increase the probability of the output based on the class labels that maximizes the scoring function. This scoring function for any of the LLMs basically estimates the likelihood of each output given the input. A word of caution is how ICO can be sensitive to the type and number of examples in the prompt, as well as the prompt format of the query itself. This is because we are still in the early stages of ICO research and better scoring functions are needed to moderate sensitivity and bias. All in all, given these significantly positive results, do you think the near future will witness more informal methods such as on-the-fly in-context learning for adapting LLMs to specific tasks than more traditional methods such as gradient-based training, fine-tuning, and changing the model parameters? or the retrieval augmented generation method. This is basically providing the pre-trained model with additional information from external sources of data. For example, a PDF file, spreadsheet data, a web link, or even a code repository, and asking the model to prioritize the external source of data and base the responses on the actual information in these documents. Just in case you are curious, this method was first discussed by Lewis and other researchers in this paper, which I will leave its reference to. As you see, instead of directly asking the model or this sequence-to-sequence -sequence generator, the questions are passed through this layer of query encoder and retriever with access to these extra documents, and the model is mainly used to generate responses in natural language in a coherent way, such as question answering, chatting with the documents, or even producing a post or reports to access external documents repeatedly or even multiple CSV files to extract data and insight from huge amounts of data and make sense of them in natural language. This workflow setup is like a blueprint that helps you extract data from any CSV file, for example files containing product prices for making better decisions in your business and areas to invest.